G'day folks, just finished putting together a grow bed that sits on top of the sump tank in the system here and I thought I'd do a bit of an aquaponic vlog just to show you guys how I put a grow bed together loads of different ways to do it, this is just the way that I do it um, to begin with, the reason it needed to be replaced is the old skin had some UV damage um, it was an IBC, it had started to crack so I decided to replace it rather that than the crack you know, get larger halfway through a crop and yeah, clay balls all through the sump, fantastic so what I've done is I've used the bottom of the old fish tank that sits behind me, or used to sit behind me here, just chopped off 300mm or around about 12 inches worth of the bottom of the tank, slid that into the cage, fit perfectly and away we go. Um, I've also already drilled out the holes, I've filled it with clay, I've planted the plants out and I've taken a little bit of vision just explaining how the different steps go. So I thought I'd bring you along and give you a bit of a look, especially for those guys who haven't set one up yet. Just to give you a bit of an idea on how I'm setting up the shrouds around the standpipe for the bell siphon, this is the way I used to have it set up. What I like to do is have an end cap with a hole in it, with the bulkhead fitting that goes through it, into the base of the grow bed, and what that does is it gives a nice stable footing for the, um, for the shroud. I've had a situation in the barrel ponding system uh, just after we made it. I just had the set shroud sitting on the base. Someone went, oh, what's this? I uh, lifted the lid off, it got stuck and actually pulled the shroud up and I had to empty the bed and refill it again. So I came up with the idea of just putting the end cap on. But what I found is there's always got to be at least 25mm of water in the base of the beds before the water can come over here to be drained out. So what I thought I'd do this time around is drill a whole heap of holes in the base of the end cap itself. I've got a couple of marks here just to line them up. So what I've got is water that will go in right at the base of the shroud and then can be sucked up so I'm basically getting as much water out of the grow bed in a cycle in a flood and drain cycle as I can to put it all together it's pretty easy uh, all I've got is um, an inch and a half hole in the bottom of the grow bed a little bulkhead fitting here what I like to do is put the rubber washer around the hole then have actually I'll take him off to make it easier then have this end cap placed over the top then just the bulkhead fitting, uh, no rubber washer there at all, straight through and then from underneath screw on the nut. And then all I have to do is just match up my little marks on the shroud and on the end cap and there we go we have our little shroud that sits around the fill pipe. It's not sitting very flat at the moment because the bottom of this bed is buckled a bit being in the sun so once it's filled up with clay it should orientate itself nice and upright. Just to cover up the siphon, all I've got is an end cap with a couple of bits of the side wall cut away. That makes it just easy to slide on and off. So now the fun job of moving that clay there into this bed here. So I hope it doesn't take too long because it's about to rain. So there you go, that's pretty much all it. I think we're about to start getting some rain so I might pack up the camera and take it inside and tomorrow we'll come back and fix up the standpipe and hopefully get some plants into here. So the clay is in and I've had the bell siphon hooked up for about 24 hours. We had a really bad storm come through yesterday afternoon so I couldn't finish the clip off. But pretty much, well, the bell is really easy to set up. Um, what I've got with this fitting here is a female thread on the inside. This is the bulkhead fitting that's keeping the shroud in place. And into that, I'm just going to screw a 25mm or 1 inch threaded coupling. And that just goes straight in there like that. And then to that, I'm just going to push in a section of 1 inch or 25mm pressure line. And that's going to give me a height of around about 8 inches or 200mm of... Um, basically water that will flood into the grow bed. What that means is I'm going to have roughly around about two inches of gravel that will be dry over the top of the wet zone. What that means is I won't get a, a algae um, growing on the surface. If your water comes all the way up you're going to get algae growing on the surface. It's just one of those things. Just showing you another standpipe. This is uh, one from the other bed just over there. This is one I've made up. Uh, for some reason it just works better in that bed. Um, with, the, <laughs> with the bell siphon, seriously, have a look online. There's Afnans, there's um, Rob from web for deb They've got some great uh, bell siphons. Um, this isn't a bell siphon how-to. This is just how I've set them up and how they work for me. But this is sort of along the lines of Afnans. Um, what I've got here is a 1 inch to 3 quarter or 25 to 20 mil reducer sleeve. Just sits in there. 20 mil or 3 quarter inch pipe. And then at the top here I have a reducer. This is a 25 mil pipe 
down to 20 mil pipe or inch to three quarter. And what that gives you is a large surface area here, or larger than if it was just the 20 mil pipe. And what that means is a lot more water will fall over and cascade and initiate the siphon a lot faster. So it just means you can run at a slightly slower flow rate into your grow beds. Um, I found that's how it works for me anyway. This one here at the moment is working, if I can pull this adapter out, fine with this little beauty here. So I've got, like I said before, an 8 inch or 20 mil riser from the base of the grow bed. The bell is pretty much well 65 mil stormwater drained. I've just got the cap on the end there and pushed it on. It's not glued in place, it's, it's very tight and it's pretty much well not letting any air through. Down the base here, where it sits, I've cut out some notches. They're around about half an inch or roughly around about 11 mil. I went a little bit over a centimetre there and that allows the water to pass through under the bell and then slowly raise on the inside until it falls over the top of the standpipe in here and drains the bed. So pretty easy setup really. I'll just pop this fella in here now. Throw the bell on and there we go. That's pretty much all it. So there's a look at the drain assembly. I've just got a threaded elbow just over there that screws into the base of the bulkhead fitting. Just a length of 25mm pipe pushed in there. Then I have another elbow on the end with a little bit of a kick up just to cause a little backflow just to help the siphon to kick off. So it is a little bit slow at the moment but I'm not too worried about that. I'll play around with the inflow over the next couple of days and work it all out. I just haven't quite got the right flow happening but hey it initiates and it turns off so you've got to be happy with that. And there we go she's off and flying. So it takes about three minutes for this whole bed to drain. So there you go. So I'm pretty happy with the way the bed's gone. What I'm going to do now is transplant in some celery that I went and bought from a hardware store today. Um, I didn't have any seeds ready. So I'm, what I want to do is just put up a bit of a wall of celery just on down that side there. Uh, these beds will be moved so this area here will be um, yeah, free to access. When you're transplanting in seedlings from soil, from a seed raising mix, it's pretty easy really. And just squeeze the bottom of the punnet there, pull your plant out. Oh, his leaves are tangled. Come on fellas. Pop him in the water and just give him a bit of a shake around. Get the majority of the soil off. You don't have to get it all off. Now pretty much we'll just dig a hole and pop this fella in. Try and get the roots to go down as deep as they can. Pop some clay around him. And then I'm just going to pull him up to where I think he needs to be. And that's pretty much all it. There's one celery plant planted out. Now I'm just going to whack, uh, I'd say probably another um, three up this side here. So we're going to have four celery plants up one side. So there we go. There's the four celery in. Those four plants will keep us in celery for months. Uh, we progressively pick it. The best celery we ever grew last season was in the aquaponics, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, now over here, just in this bed, the next things I want to move uh, is this um, jalapeno pepper or chili that's in this um, cloth grow bag here, and also this unknown capsicum uh, or pepper. Um, it's a sweet pepper by the look of it, or a capsicum. Uh, it was going to be tossed out into the compost, so I thought, you know, I'll chop him right back and grow, throw him in here. And he's, you know, taken off really well. Got some new branches on there, some little fruit. And the other thing are all these Okinawan spinach um, cuttings. Uh, years ago, I used to do hydroponics uh, before I, we bought this place here. And we were growing uh, brassicas and lettuce and that sort of thing, um, just in <laughs> really makeshift NFT tubing. And these are the little neck cups I used to use, so I grabbed a whole heap of them, chopped off uh, some cuttings of our Okinawan spinach, just popped them in there, and this was a couple of weeks ago, and they've put on some nice roots. So these guys here, the reason I did them is in these pots is um, I was hoping I wouldn't damage the roots that much, and it looks to have worked all right. So I've got a couple of them that I want to bring over. Working with these neck cups is pretty great, actually. Just dig this clay aside a bit. Try and part it as far as I can, not to damage the roots too much. And there we go. Just pop them in there and look at that. These are some of the worms that came in with the clay balls. So just pop them down there, don't want to hurt him. So this small one, same thing, just dig this meteor aside a bit. There we go. Just bury him in. That's pretty much all it. 
really not that hard transplanting plants in um, aquaponics in the clay media at all. Now for this capsicum and chili or hot pepper and sweet pepper, um, it's pretty easy. This guy here, all his roots are growing through this little neck cup or orchid cup here. Just had an ambulance go by. Um, so with this guy here, all I need to do is dig a big enough hole in the other bed just to take these roots, try not to damage them too much. Um, look at that, that's pretty fantastic growth for just a couple of weeks. This fella here can just go straight into the middle. Again, another compost worm, so might actually put him in there because there's a bit of organic matter in there. Just dig this down. Now the next one's going to be a little bit more difficult. This is the jalapeno in the cloth bag. It's only going to be more difficult because as you saw with the other plants, you scoop out the clay and it just falls straight back in. So um, this one might be a bit fiddly, might take a while to transplant, but just to give you an idea, these guys here, uh, they're a cloth pouch. Um, I've actually just got a whole heap of root pouches in today. Um, the idea behind them is when they're used in the soil, they're used as an air pruning pot. So what that means is um, the roots of the plants will grow to the outside, they'll feel the dry air on the outside, the roots will die off and two more roots or a couple more roots will start further back and you end up with a very healthy plant. Root pruning is a fantastic way to grow you know, large plants in small pots. Um, with the aquaponics though, as you can see, the roots grow through the side, not as many as normally would, into the wet zone. Um, and it just means that you can actually pick these guys up and move them around a lot easier than if they were, you know, just a bare-rooted plant in the system. So there we go. It's about 18 hours after these plants were planted out and they've got very little, if any, transplant shock at all. There's just a bit of a look at some of the celery over there. The um, sweet pepper and the jalapeno are doing rather well. Um, no wilt on them that I can see. The little beetroot that I just popped in for fun is laying down, but that's just beetroot. I think they're a lazy plant. Um, yeah, so there's just a bit of a look at setting the bed up, the siphon and the guard and all that sort of stuff. Um, just on the bell siphon, don't forget to check out Afnan and um, Rob from Web for Deb's link. They're in the description below. Um, yeah, they'll sort you out with some other ideas. Um, I mean, Afnan's siphon is pretty much all the standard a lot of people use around the world. And I really like uh, Web for Deb's um, version of the, the bell siphon for fast moving systems. Um, the water over there is about the only other thing I've just noticed. I'm getting a fair bit of splash over the back of the bed there. So I've got to sort out some sort of a canister to um, control the flow down into the gravel and also to prevent the, um, the algae from growing on top. Um, the root pouches, that bed over there will probably end up being a root pouch bed. I'll set that up over the back, end up with a bit of an L-shape arrangement. I'm just using less gravel and I want to try using a few different mediums to grow plants in. And this bed over here will go beside it over that side and I want to turn that into a deep water culture bed uh, to grow some leafy greens and throw some grow grips in there. So that's just a bit of a, you know, what's on the cards for this system. I'll put a link in the description below to our Bits Out the Back store. We're just stocking a few things like the Venturis, uh, the uni seals and the root pouches and grow grips, just to try and make them cheaper for the backyard um, aquaponicist. I know how expensive it was when we first started out trying to source some of these things, so suss that out if you're interested. Also include a link to the vlog playlist on this build here and also a couple of how-to clips so suss them out if you're interested in that and I shall pretty much well leave it there I think. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions pop them in the comments section below and I shall get back to you. Other than that I hope you guys all have an absolutely fantastic week and I shall catch you next clip. Cheers folks! Which one's the biggest? I'm thinking of that one that's sort of coming around now down here. But then there's another one that's pretty close to its size as well. Actually, there's probably three about that size. This is Bianca's favourite pastime. Picking the biggest fish. Thought you guys might like to have a bit of a look at them. Cheers, folks. Have a great one.